The West Wave project is uh, a project where we're going to deploy um, the first um, wave farm in Europe uh, on the west coast of Ireland by 2018. It's a demonstration project, so it's to demonstrate the durability and the performance of the technology, uh, demonstrate that we can deploy that technology in an environmentally friendly way, and demonstrate that we can show that the supply chain in Ireland can support a project like Westwave and the follow-on projects then from that. I suppose why are we doing this is, a, is, 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 is because we have a strategy to uh, decarbonise our generation by 2050. And as a stepping stone to that, we plan to have 26% uh, renewables by 2025. If you look at Ireland, we're at the very edge of, of Europe. We're at the very end of a long fuel supply chain. So we're highly uh, dependent on imported, expensive fossil fuels. Now, at the same time, our location is fortuitous because we're also uh, facing out into the Atlantic Ocean. Half of Europe's wave energy resources are located between Ireland and the UK waters. And within that, Ireland's wave resource is something like 20% better than Scotland. So we have an abundant wave energy resource just off our coastline. It's, uh, you know, it's a secure supply. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's reasonably predictable. Um, it's, uh, it's clean. It's environmentally friendly. In terms of wave energy devices, a lot of the structure in a wave energy device is actually below the waterline. So unlike some of the other renewable technologies, it has advantages in terms of uh, vis visible or visual impact, uh, which is very beneficial. The Irish government, through the uh, Ocean Offshore Renewable Energy Development Plan, which was published in the springtime, uh, outlined uh, the results of a strategic environmental assessment which they carried out and that assessment concluded that it's possible to have up to 1500 or 2000 megawatts of ocean energy installed in Irish waters without any significant environmental impact. The project you know, is, is being supported by uh, like the EU, uh, by our own Irish state um, and by some of the research institutions. The EU for example have launched through the European Commission uh, an ocean energy forum uh, which is an industry forum which is tasked with coming up with a, a roadmap or a strategy towards commercialisation of, of this ocean energy technology. So the, the Commission are fully behind ocean energy and, and have put their, their funding schemes behind it as well in terms of funds like Horizon 2020 and funds like NER 300. The Irish state, again, fully behind ocean energy, full of supp fully supportive of what we're doing. Uh, the Irish government published the uh, an offshore renewable energy development plan back in the spring and it outlines a range of supports and measures which Westwave will be able to avail of in due course. And I suppose lastly we are collaborating with some of the research institutions. For example we're um, collaborating with UCC. They've received significant SFI funding for marine renewable energy research so we've sponsored a, a spoke of that research and the outputs of that will feed into Westwave and will feed into follow-on projects as well. The biggest challenge really for, for Westwave and demonstration projects like Westwave is the technology. Uh, you know, proving a technology that works at a prototype level uh, before we can deploy it in a project like Westwave would be key. Now a lot of progress is being made right now in proving that technology. At the European Marine Energy Test Site in, in the Orkney Islands, for example, there's a huge amount of progress being made. A lot of the leading developers, technology developers, are testing their devices up there in real sea conditions. There are over a dozen different devices being tested, and many of them have actually you know, exported power now out, out onto the, the national grid system, so they have proven that their technology works. The challenge for us now in the next while, next two years, is to make sure we select a technology that has proven itself consistently over long periods of time, to the right performance levels and in all sea conditions. The SEAI, for example, have uh, awarded us a grant uh, recently of 1.3 million, and that's supporting the consenting stage activities for the project. So we're very grateful for SEAI, and they're very, very supportive of the Westwave project and of ocean energy development in Ireland. The European Commission. Uh, have just announced the results of uh, their NER300 uh, fund. Now NER300 is one of the 
largest carbon um, energy technology uh, uh, pr project fun funding mechanisms in the world. And they've awarded something like one billion to, to uh, 19 projects across 12 countries uh, recently. And we were in that uh, award, we received 23 million. So we're really delighted with that. So that's a revenue support for the Westwave project. When will this sector be commercial? I mean, I think the next steps for the industry are we need to see a number of additional projects like Westwave. So we expect to see several more projects following on from Westwave over the next 10 years. And that might be the, that'll be the first phase of, of ocean energy development. A second phase will happen probably by the mid 2020s where we'll start to see much bigger projects which will start to use the learnings from, from Westwave, starting to see some economies of scale, starting to see the performance getting better based on the demonstration projects. So we expect to see projects that are maybe f five to ten times the size of Westwave starting to, to get commissioned in the mid-2020s.